Hello, Mians. I know you're not gonna like that, but here we are already, so let's do it anyway. Um, on Linux, there are certain things you can do without worrying, some things you should be careful about, a few things it's not a good idea to do, even if many are doing them. But there is also one unbreakable rule you should never, ever violate. It goes like, when you can do something in your phone, don't use the desktop for it. And the one time, or one of the few times I didn't listen to myself, it was proved devastating, as I lost my Discord account. It all started around four or six weeks with this issue on glib. It's a series of patches for merging g-object introspection back in glib, and some work will be on glib 2.80 release together with GNOME 46 in March. One of the most significant changes for GNOME Next that perhaps won't get a lot of attention. The initial plan for g-object introspection was to have it incubate as a separate repository until we figured out the kinks and then merge it back into glib. After 10 plus years, the kinks have been largely figured out, and everyone depends on the introspection functionality one way or the other. Sadly, the merge never happened because nobody had enough spare cycles to make it happen. This has caused various issues in the libg repository API, especially when it comes to naming and has produced what is, in essence, a circular dependency. It's a nice reading, but I won't go to all the way down. What you need to know, and what I should had known, is that some bits of this issue had merged on main. Probably you're wondering how glib is related with me losing my Discord account. Well, I had the same question myself, but it was too late when I figured it out. Most of you know that I run a Fedora Rawhide, and then I build GNOME from sources on top of this. So now you're probably wondering, Hey me, how the hell you only lose your Discord? How you didn't lose the colors of life too? Hmm? Makeup? In reality though, it's pretty easy to maintain an upstream and develop GNOME edition. It's not like the KDE mess with the 500 qubit frameworks. So you compile and install GNOME upstream packages normally on USR, for example Mutter and Shell. And if something is broken, you can either revert to a previous commit or reinstall Fedora's original packages that basically overwrite your custom installation because most usually they build the same files. Key phrase, most usually, but unfortunately not always. And that was exactly the case when I built glib279 when Fedora was shipping glib 2.78. So after installing upstream glib, everything was cool, till to relog, of course. Hashtag sarcasm. One bad was that I relogged the next day and after I had done one more million things on my PC, so when I couldn't start GNOME on the next boot, I wasn't sure what had broken it. I was getting various system D errors, and my first thought was that's a glib issue, so I reinstalled the Fedora package. That didn't work, and after four days and more than 20 hours I couldn't get it fixed. Alright, it's embarrassing, I know, but I've made my mind up. I was gonna fucking reinstall everything! Which wasn't so bad as it may sound, because I save everything online, so my backup process was like half an hour max. Then I spent around two more hours to set up Rawhide. And by the way, I may put a guide on GitHub because it's a really nice system if you want to always use GNOME Latest. And it's also super stable, till some misfortune happens obviously, which averages like once every two years. Uh, not that bad, is it? Anyway, next day and the next day after a clean installation for a Linux user is like Christmas. Except if you rebuild glib and you break again everything, so you suddenly hate every Christmas, you hate God, and you hate KDE even more because these motherfuckers are glibless. At least this time, I caught it right away. So I knew it was glib causing it. I put all my focus on it, and I fixed it in 20 minutes. Basically, the problem was that I had ended up with mixed builds of glib, gobject, and gio. And the only feedback I was getting was an issue on systemd user session and some non-very helpful dbus messages. So, even from a user perspective, that work on glib will release us from lots of wasted hours. Because I bet many of you have faced troubles that relate. Am I wrong? Okay me, but that still doesn't explain how you locked out from your Discord. Wait, I'm getting to it. But before let me share you one more development news from GNOME 46. Um, first of all, the background panel doesn't lag anymore on resizing. They fixed that by creating wallpaper thumbnails when previously settings app was loading the full image. But what I actually want to show to you is the new user panel that, oh my god, is now hidden under the system. To be more precise, there is nothing new to it other than they're now hiding it, which is a terribly awful design. I mean, it makes sense to hide it under system because it is completely useless, but that's the real design flaw. 
because instead of spending even a single second on moving the same things around, perhaps they should put all the skills they have on creating GNOME logins in sync, and then maybe people wouldn't lose their Discord? Alright, time to place the pieces together. A few months ago I made a second Discord account, and I used my Fedora for it, and Fedora only. I didn't log in from anywhere else. Um, you can already tell where this is going, right? And for making the things even worse, I decided to fully embrace the GNOME experience, like I wasn't freaking knowing. So I used the Authenticator app for generating the two-factor authentication codes for Discord. Authenticator is an app with 100,000 downloads on Flathub, but it has an unbelievable design issue. It doesn't sync your codes. It has an export-import on preferences that at first you get lazy to get bothered with, and later you just completely forget it. Because every such app, any kind of such app for the last past 10 years, automatically saves your account, either on Google or Apple or somewhere, so you always believe that your codes are stored online, even if they aren't. Um, brain replays past experiences to react with current. And that's it. Because of glib, I made a fresh Linux installation, and I lost both the Chrome session and the two-factor codes for Discord. I can't even delete my account or make a new one, because Discord uses phone numbers for registration. All thanks to GNOME amazing user experience and design. Hashtag sarcasm together with emoji. Nah, that's not fault of Authenticator app. It's 100% fault of the platform not providing platform-ready logins. And excuse me anyway, but until when GNOME contributors and GNOME users should be forced to use Google accounts for anything? Um, personally, in the last three to four years, I have moved a glorious number of tasks from my Linux to my phone, which ironically is also Linux, but you know, the not cool kind of Linux. I don't watch movies on Linux anymore, or YouTube, or listen to music, or reading sites, or chatting, or shopping, or paying my bills from. All those, and many more, are now phone exclusively. And if I want to check on time, I will use my phone again, while I'm sitting on computer. No BS. That brings another matter, and most specifically the matter of Linux market share. Perhaps it's 3%, but if the actual Linux desktop use has been cut in the half just in the last five years because people use their phones more, that doesn't make it 1.5% in comparison. But no matter what the exact percentage is, there is a fact that can't get you wrong. And that's the contributions number. More users, more contributors. As simple as that. So do you see more contributions on Linux desktops? It's a rhetorical question, stupid.